We're at the home of Whiteleaf this afternoon as they take on Greenwich Borough with the team's third and fifth in the table. Sure to be a stormy encounter this afternoon. Welcome to match day 16. Whiteleaf weren't tipped to be this high in the table, but Lee Dynam's come in and transformed their form this season. As for Greenwich Borough, they were tipped to be high up, and they'll be looking to push on and get automatic promotion this season. It's going to be a fascinating encounter between these two Bostic South teams. So, very good afternoon to uh, Mick Sullivan. Hotly anticipated counter between two teams up at the top of Bostick Division 1 South. And we know a little bit about these two teams, Mick. Having watched Greenwich Borough earlier on in the season, they're one of the favourites to go up automatically. And for Whiteleaf, it's been a fantastic season so far. Fantastic season, most definitely. If you picture the setting, hopefully it's going to be a really good game, which I'm sure it will be. Greenwich are very competitive and I know Lee's got Whiteleaf up for this game. Spoke to Gary Alexander yesterday and he'll be very keen for them to continue their recent form and be chasing automatic promotion for Whiteleaf slightly different most people didn't expect to see them up there at this stage of the season in third position and I'm sure Lee Dynam will be hoping that they continue their trajectory this season and are competing come April and May but we're about to kick off this Bostic Division 1 South game and away we go and it is at Greenwich Borough that Launch the ball long towards that white leaf defence and they'll win it back off the rebound and come forward again. It's a sharp start. What can they do? Into the midfield, laid off to that left-hand side. Opportunity to get the ball into the 18-yard box. In it comes. It's a really good start from the visitors. That goes flying across the six-yard box. Lots of real early pressure here, Mick, from the away team. And we expected this one to be uh, ferocious from the off and it's certainly not disappointing. It hasn't so far. It'll be interesting from this set piece. And it goes short though. It's very clever. Flicked on. Going to get it back. Gets it back. Wonderful goal. Superb set piece. And that was a really well worked corner routine. It was played in low to the edge of the six yard box. And then just flicked out. Almost penalty spot area and finished into the top corner. Really off the training ground Mick. Worked to a tee. Yeah, off the training ground, fantastic. It's good. We don't often see well routined set pieces like that, and they've worked on that very well, and it's a great finish. Really positive start from Greenwich Borough, and they've caught Whiteleaf Cold, and that set piece was taken superbly. I'm sure practiced on Thursday evening. You can only do it once in the game, but it will be another corner for the visitors. The way they're setting up looks like they're practice corners and set two, set routines here. Can make such a difference in games like this. And it goes this time long towards the back post. It is headed on by a Borough player, but eventually Whiteleaf will relieve the pressure and clear. And they might break here as well. And they play it long up towards Ajakai. Ajakai comes out, clatters into the keeper. Referee doesn't blow his whistle, says play on. It would have been a free kick if he would have blown to Greenwich Borough, but it is Daniel... Ajakai, who seems to be have come the worst off there and he ran through the keeper came out quickly and he clattered in to Kamar third Greenwich Borough corner of the game so far and they're leading the way the team in fifth at the beginning of the day 1-0 up another chance for them to take further control of this game in it comes flicked on three header in the end and that free header was Mark Phillips should have done a little bit better with that Mick he should have done, but no one was near him. I, d I just, Whiteleaf seems so flat at the minute. I'm not sure. What it just, the body language doesn't look great either. A little bit sloppy at the moment, and both teams playing it long. Charlie McDonald, this time the beneficiary of that, gets the ball down, not too far away from the 18 yard box, lays it off. It's a really sloppy pass in the end. It's a poor touch as well. Whiteleaf will win it back, and they might have the opportunity now to come forward with Clayton Clayton lays in Masungu running towards the box Masungu what can he do left foot drives it across well defended Dean Gunner getting his head on that and again it's Borough that are in 
possession and I feel Mick that Whiteleaf are going to have to be more careful with the ball. Barham, referee's given another free kick. This time it's going to be the first booking of the game, is it? It's a late challenge. Jackson Mutis was the one that's been hit hard there. Just it's looking at Tilly. Scarborough that's made that late challenge. He's getting a telling off from the referee and it will be the first yellow card of the game. I was just looking at that. Uh, obviously, Whiteleaf are playing 4 4 2, but I think Greenwich have got more of the diamond in the middle, and I think that's creating a little bit more problems for Whiteleaf for having adapted to that. Eventually, the referee does blow the whistle, and the ball comes in. It is towards the near post. Nobody got their head on it, but Greenwich Borough still have the ball. They play it back in, going to be offside there, surely, and the linesman's flag does go up. Play on, says the referee, and they do, and it goes down to Masungo, who drives forward over the halfway line for. Whiteleaf and looks for the feet of Ajakai. Ajakai gets onto it, does really well to get onto that. Just inside the 18 yard box, comes back, played in, Clayton plays it in. We've seen many a game, haven't we, Ben? Like last week with Harangay and Haybridge, they had a lot of the possession in the second half and never really scored a goal from it. And then bang, Haybridge got the other end of the score. So who knows what this game will end up at, at 90 minutes. Yeah, plenty of the game left. Still 15 minutes until half time. McDonald takes the ball down. Edge of the box, what can he do? Tenacity from McDonald to keep that move going. Gets it back just inside the 18 yard box, but in the end, it is well intercepted by Masongu. Can't keep it down. In a minute, Mick, I'm going to get you to count how many passes Whiteleaf can string together because at the moment, that is their biggest problem. They're just giving away possession far too easily. You mentioned the second balls, but. They cannot pass more than a couple of passes together without being intercepted by somebody in blue. Yes, for them playing two up front, it looks like they want to try and get Greenwich turning and getting in behind them, and uh, inevitably they're giving the ball back quite a lot. The two up top definitely will have to do more if they're going to play that way. They haven't managed to hold the ball up at all so far in this game, although Kaji has been in a couple of times. They are on the edge of the box now though and it comes all the way to Hutchins. First opportunity for him to maybe have a strike at goal. It's straight into George Kumar. Does have to make the save. And that was Hutchins' first real effort on goal. Good strike but the angle wasn't good for Tommy. It's on his better foot so he's always going to work the goalkeeper a bit. We have seen many times before though that these kind of games, if it's only 1-0, so easy to get yourself back in even if you're not playing well in the game and certainly Whiteleaf and Lee Dunning will be hoping that's the case as they go long from the throw and it will fall back to on well, a one run can't keep hold of the ball and again McDonald wins it back for Barham plays it up towards Barham takes it down really good touch from Barham into the 18 yard box what can he do on his right foot well saved comes out thought it was going to fall to Fusion then and Whiteleaf escapes and we mentioned that touch from Barham just took it down. It was a really precise first touch, laid it off into the 18 yard box. And Chance for a shot, Fugin goes for the shot. Tupper, comfortable save, comfortable height for the keeper. Perhaps we're in for a real treat in the last 35 minutes of the game. Well, Whiteleaf goal would freshen this whole game up, definitely. The problem that they have is they've not really looked like testing George Kamar out. Can they do it now? It's on the edge of this box. Really poor play, and that has summed up Whiteleaf this afternoon. And Greenwich will come away with Barham, and this is going to be a threat. Delightful first touch from Barham. Looks to get it across towards McDonald. Eventually, he'll win the corner. If Whiteleaf get a goal, you'll see such a massive surge in inspiration in wanting to get and win the game but all the time they're 1-0 down they're still playing flat for my my liking it doesn't seem to be the desire the real desire to want to win this game and if you're Gary Alexander managing Greenwich Borough you, you'll be very happy no matter what happens if this stays the same you won't care about the football that you played no you won't as you said like they'd be second in the league come 90 minutes and that's where he wanted to be at the start of the season. Sims brings the ball forward, lays it off, goes in, chance, and it's going to be the equalising goal! And from absolutely nowhere, 
Whiteleaf are back in this game. And you mentioned just a moment or so ago that that could well happen. And it has happened. They've come forward. It was Sims who did the running to start with. The ball went into the box. And it was a substitute. Scott Day found himself in acres of room on the edge of the six-yard box just to nod that home. Poor defending from Greenwich Borough. They've not really been tested in this game. It's the first time. And Scott Day nods it in. And somehow it's Whiteleaf 1, Greenwich Borough 1. And now, Mick, as you mentioned, we might just have a game of it in the last 25 minutes or so. I think, though, you're going to see Whiteleaf go for it now. This could end up 2-1 to them, believe it or not. This game seems to have sparked into life thanks to that goal from Scott Day. And that's a long corner towards the back post. Well defended. And again, it was Day maybe claiming the last effort for man of the match. And it's Whiteleaf that come forward again. And this time they come forward with pace. And it's Clayton. Clayton thinks the ball to that back post. Gets up. Kumar does have to come out and do something this time. He clips the ball away. Elsom gets the ball in. In it goes. Flicked off. Could be an opportunity now. Needs to be well defended. Referee's blown for the free kick. And it was a foul in the end. But Dean Gunner getting his foot in there. And that was a must. Because it was going all the way across the six-yard box to be tapped in. All about getting quality deliveries in there and getting numbers. And uh, that's what Whiteleaf did then. Last 15 minutes of the game. Good ball across. Barham. Just on the edge of the six-yard box. And when that ball went in, you fancied that he was going to bury that into the net. It was a difficult opportunity, to be fair to him. Ajakai wins the ball back. Got pace to burn into the 18-yard box. This could be dangerous for Whiteleaf. Crosses it. Managed to get it down to Day. What can Day do? Bounces. Has to produce a save there from Kamar. I thought the cross was originally overhit by Ajakai. It was managed to be flicked back down and Kamar had to pull out the saves. Chance for a shot. Goes for the shot. Has to produce a save there from Kamar. And the referee blows the full-time whistle and it will be a point apiece for these two sides this afternoon. It was Greenwich Borough who took the lead inside three minutes from that well-worked corner. They had much the better of the first half, but Whiteleaf changed their formation at half-time. They got back into the game and the equaliser came from substitute Scott Day. Both these sides will have aspirations of promotion this season, but they'll have to make do with... The point here at Whiteleaf is finished. Whiteleaf 1, Greenwich Borough 1. So Lee, it was, um, it was a fast start from Greenwich and they dominated much of that first half, but you got yourself back into the game. Was it a, a, a conscious change at half-time? No, we just went to 4-3-3. Three, three. We, we were asleep for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we've done that sometimes. Sometimes we'll score early and then sit off them. So it's a learning curve for, for some of the boys. Um, but never in any doubt that we'd get into this game. We've got the quality there. Great, great attitude from the boys. And um, yeah, it was uh, the shape. We just changed it to a 4 3 3 in the second half, really. That was it. We've got to mention away from the game now. Obviously, this was your last game as Whiteleaf manager, and you're going to manage Kingstonian. Um, a new challenge for you. What, what made that decision for you? Tough decision. Great, great club I'm going to. Very excited. Big club. Good, good players there. Um, and and heart wise, it was it was. I've only been here a year, but I've, I've turned it around. And the boys I brought in, they, they believe in what I say. I'm I'm an honest honest um, manager. I'll tell you how it is. If you're right or wrong, um, if you accept it. But um, yeah, it, it was a tough decision. Heart wise, head wise, no, it wasn't. It was uh, it was what I had to do, what I want to do, um, and and then go back up into obviously the Rams Prem was with Farnborough. And, and now as a manager and, and see what I can do. 
and we, we were touched on it this morning on the radio show what Kingstonian can achieve this season obviously up just outside the playoffs um, a brilliant opportunity perhaps to challenge for the National South yeah look it's, it's, it's a club that should be up there challenging um, for playoffs I mean this year everyone's saying Billericke but yeah there's a couple of teams that could possibly go and win it um, so um, yeah it's, it's just about getting them in getting a foothold um, assessing the squad um, I've done a lot of research on, on the ones that I don't know I know quite a few of them in there um, as players uh, and I know a couple as, uh, personally through being at Farnborough um, but yeah it's um, yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to the challenge a final word on Whiteleaf. Obviously, this season has been tremendous so far. You started the day in third position. There's there's something to build on here for whoever comes in next. Definitely, it's a great club. Um, said that since I came in, I was excited when I left Farnborough, which is a huge club in non-league. All right, I was assistant manager, but it's still a big club. And we we came in very excited. One that I could train and and work on things because of the facilities here with the pitch, so you can train twice a week for two hours a time and, and, and get your ideas in and get your get your fitness levels up and um, uh, yeah so yeah it was yeah, excited so Gary you, you seem quite in control of that first half you must have been disappointed to concede that goal in the second no, obviously we started well we started the game well we scored a uh, goal that we worked on that was a good goal that was obviously pleasing and uh, you know White looked a good side it's not an easy place to come on the surface they're a good side so it's a tough tough game and so I've got to be pleased with one really impressed with the way you did start the game. It seemed like you started it a really neat set piece that you'd obviously worked on the training ground to take the lead. Yeah, no, definitely. Obviously, set pieces win games and it's been good work on it. It's nice to see that come up. But, um, no, obviously, I was a bit disappointed not to go away having got three points, but I said, Whiteley, for a good side, they're up there for a reason, and it's always been big. Congratulations, Jack. I've made you the Bostick man of the match today. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I feel happy. Point away from home, I think we'll always take that this time of the season. But I think, to be fair, like a few chances at the end, I think I could have scored, could have scored a hell of a hat trick today. But one of them things, we'll take the point and we'll go again on Monday. So, yeah, it's good from us. Great. I mean, can you tell the viewers and the listeners what's your background? All I do know is there was a scout watching you today, mm-hmm. which you probably weren't aware of. Mm-hmm. But if you were, you played well enough in front of him, from my mm-hmm. point of view. I mean, can you tell us a bit more? I know you come from Phoenix Sport. Mm-hmm. Can you talk, go back further than that? Yeah, so first of all, I wasn't a striker. I was actually a right back for Haybridge Swifts in the Ryman North, or the Bostick North now. And then a manager called Jody Brown, he, he took me from right back, said, look, I, could, I feel like you can have a bit of a chance up front today. That that game was against Cray Wanderers and actually scored a hat-trick. So he was like, I'm going to keep up with for the rest of the season. And then I've done well at the end of that season, managed to get a trial at Colchester, but just wrong timing really. Come at the end of the season, the manager left and I didn't really get a chance. So now I've come back. Uh, my agent has actually took me to the south and I'm playing really well. I've got 11 goals this season so far, so and a lot of people are watching, so hopefully at the end of this season I can kick on and get to where I want to be. How old are you, Jack, to set up into it? 21. 21, so you're yeah. the right age for that. Yeah, so I'm in sort of the under-23s bracket, but also I'm looking to push on to the, any first team, like if I can get a chance of being at a pro level. What's your personal targets for this season? Because I always ask to send the forwards and some of them go over the top. And remember, Gary Alexander will be listening to this. Mm. What, what's your personal goal target for Greenwich Bar this season? So for Greenwich Bar, I think 30 goals. 30 goals is my target. I've got I've set myself 15 before Christmas and 15 after Christmas. So I'm on 13 at the moment, 11 league goals and two cup goals. So I'm two away and it's only in November, October. Yeah. So I'm nearly there now, but obviously if I can get 15 before and carry on going, then my target after Christmas gets shorter. So 30 goals is my target.
Kunis just inside the area. Trying to wriggle free of Elphick's challenge. Chambers, keep move alive, folks on for Ferguson. On for Ming, can he get the shot out from under his feet? Nice drag back from Ming. Ferguson, great goal. Great teamwork from Dulwich. They stay patient in that attack. And they're giving their just rewards, and it's Nathan Ferguson who opens the scoring today. It's going to come wide here to Harding. Against Tanisha Abrahams, just holding him up. Comes the cross, Taylor doesn't get the touch, all the way through it comes, Edwards with the save, and the rebounds turn home. And Tony Garrett, who's been on the field for a couple of minutes, has brought Burgess Hill level in this game. Towards Clunas it goes, holding off Richmond. Taking over the situation as well. Clunas blocked off. Trying to ride a couple of challenges, gets his way through, still Clunas. Poking it on, brilliant individual goal! He's on the score sheet yet again! All his own doing, didn't give up the situation. He's in red hot form at the moment. Rodriguez, Harding. Mackenzie's gone beyond Chambers here. Cross takes a deflection in towards Garrett. It's an own goal, Quay Taylor's put it in his own net and Burgess Hill respond again. Completely wrong-footed Edwards, that touch from Taylor. And Dulwich yet again pegged back. Swung in, Chambers! Two goals in two games for Michael Chambers. Dulwich lead for a third time today. Well, I said in midweek he's not a likely goal scorer, but he's got two in two now. Timely goal for the Hamlet.
In the Bostic Premier Division, Hendon remained top after Josh Walker's 87th minute winner secured all three points for the Dons despite them trailing the game on 53 minutes to without a win Worthing. Level on points, Dulwich Hamlet keep the pressure on the top with a 3-2 win over Burgess Hill Town. Lace then, however, crack under that pressure for the chase for the top spot, succumbing a heavy defeat at home to Folkestone and Victor, losing 5-1. Consolation coming from Matt Blake on 61 minutes. Tootin make it three wins on the bounce with a 2-1 win over Tunbridge Angels to level with Harlow Town, Needham Market, Furrick and Burgess Hilltown, who all have 12 points. Lowestoft are knocked for six, with Ryan Hall completing his hat-trick for the Moatsiders on 83. Dorking Wanderers climb to 15th with their recent signing, Lewis Taylor finding the net after 18 minutes on his debut with a 3-2 win over Needham Market. In the Bostic North, Canvey Island remain top of the division with a 3-2 win over AFC Sudbury, a game in which both sides found the net in the 90th minute. All of the top half of the North Division are unbeaten with Derham Town, AFC Hornchurch, Haringey Borough, Berry Town, Haybridge Swifts, Hartford Town and Grays Athletic all winning their games. Contrastingly, the teams now positioning in the bottom half of the tables all failed to secure three points. It was heavy 4-0 defeats for Norwich United and Brentwood Town. In the Bostic South, despite being 1-0 down after 12 minutes, Lewis emphatically put eight past Herm Bay to confirm their top spot position. All eight goals came after 45 and Billy Medlock completed his hat-trick on 75. Corinthian Casuals and Cray Wanderers both climb up the playoff positions with wins over Hastings United and Thamesmead Town. Points are shared between Whiteleaf, Greenwich Borough, Wharton Casuals and Hive Town to keep the points difference between 9th and 4th to just 3. Defeats for VCD Athletic, Molesey, East Grinstead Town and Ashford sees little movement at the bottom of the table. However, 3-1 wins for Horsham and Faversham Town sees them climb up the table and away from the danger zone. As the cold weather sets in here at Whiteleaf, it's a point of peace for these two promotion chasing sides. Next up for us is FA Trophy Football next week.